Hola a todos! I'm going to show you how to spice up basic Spanish sentences. In part two of the series, I went through basic structures to create sentences based on a structure of me gusta and me encanta, conjugated verbs and opinion phrases plus a fact. And in part one, I went through loads of connectives, conjunctions and time phrases to add in your work. Now let's put together everything we've learned so far to create really high quality sentences. An empty and completed version of this document will be available on my website astarspanish.com forward slash grammar. Vale, vamos. So starting with the me gusta and me encanta section. In the um, previous video we talked about um, synonyms like me mola, me flipa, and the negative stuff like I don't like, it bores me. Um, and we talked about the structure me gusta or any of these plus an infinitive or a noun. And here are some examples, for example, me gusta jugar los videojuegos. So it, now let's talk about um, other people. So all of this is the I form I like or I don't like. Let's talk about other people and how to say if they like something or they don't like something. Okay, so I've written all of these up now. So we have te gusta, le gusta, nos gusta, os gusta, and les gusta. All of these can be gustan as well if it's plural. Let's look at some examples so you know what I mean. Also, um, at the start here, versus a ti or a el or a nosotros, that's a way of emphasizing um, who likes something. So, for example, if I, I can say a mi me gusta, to me, I love this. So, as we saw above, a mi me gusta jugar los videojuegos, that's perfectly fine, or you can just have me gusta. So same with any of these, we can say a ti te gusta jugar los videojuegos, or just te gusta jugar los videojuegos. The a ti bit is just emphasizing, like, oh, to me, to you, it's really emphasizing that. Apart from that, you, that's why I put it in brackets, you can just have te gusta, le gusta, etc. So let's look at some examples then. So examples. So let's look at our first example. So I'm going to say a Pablo. So Pablo just being another character here. A Pablo. Le gusta. He likes. So this being one person. He likes. Let's say. Um, so after gusta I need a noun or infinitive. I'm going to go for a noun. I'm going to say la comida. And then describe this type of food. Let's say la comida mexicana. So this would just translate to um, Pablo likes, so he, he likes, Pablo likes uh, Mexican food. Vale? Um, let's do some more examples. So this works, this gusta, can be swapped for pretty much any of these other verbs, so synonyms basically, to gusta, or like no gusta, or for example, me fastidia, me da rabia. Um, it works mostly with any of these, pretty much with all of these, I believe. Okay, and we'll look at some examples just to really make sure that it works with both of them. So we can say a mis padres. Les encantan. If they love something, remember encantar or encantan is a stronger version of um, just gusta. And because there's an N here, I'm going to follow it with uh, something plural. So I'm going to say a plural noun here. So les encantan. Los gatos. I'm going to say pequeños just as an extra adjective here. So how would we tr translate this? So my, um, my parents, or I mean, yeah, my parents, does have I got space in here, my parents love, or they love, um, small cats. Gatos is cats. So my parents love small cats. A mis padres les encantan los gatos pequeños. Um, let's keep going. So I'm mi hermano this time, so my, bro my brother. A mi hermano um, le pone feliz. I'm going to use... El buen tiempo. So tiempo here is weather. So um, for my brother, or like, you know, to my brother, as we saw above, I'm um, just my brother likes, it makes him happy, good weather. So when I translate it into English, I'm going to say, um, good weather, so buen tiempo, I'm going to flip the words around. So good weather makes my brother happy is what I'm going to say. So this is not using gusta or encanta, we're using, we're using le pone feliz, which we saw up here where we saw me pone feliz. Same thing, just the me change to le. So it makes my brother feliz is happy, so it makes my brother happy. Um, Let's keep going. Let's do one more. Again, a mi tío, tío being uncle, a mi tío le preocupa. Oops, spelling. Le preocupa, we saw it means um, he worries about, so it worries him. A mi tío le preocupa la contaminación. 
and this just means um, contamination or pollution worries um, or like makes him worried. My uncle, so my uncle worries about pollution. It worries him. Vale? So this is how we use how we talked about other people using the same structure. So if you, if you've said something like you know me gusta jugar los videojuegos, can you give an opinion or like a fact about a sibling or a friend? Does your sibling you know like to play video games as well, etc. Okay. Now moving on to these examples here, how can we make them even better? So they're quite short, only a couple of words. Let's see how we can make them better. So I'm going to write here, spice up sentences by adding why, by adding a reason. Vale? So for example, here we have me gusta jugar los videojuegos. Um, we can say, so first I'm going to rewrite some of this. Jugar los videojuegos. We can also add um, con mis amigos, just to add extra information here while I rewrite the sentence. Now let's go into the reason. So con mis amigos. Now let's use por qué. So por qué means because. It's how we can add a y. Por qué. And then we can say por qué es. And then how do we describe playing video games? What is it? I'm going to say entertaining. So the word for entertaining is entretenido. So now we've gone from a simpler sentence, which is like five words long, to a slightly longer, more complex sentence with the reason por qué es entretenido. And the four ways of saying because, let's write it here. Four ways of saying because. There's four synonyms to um, por qué or three other synonyms. So we have por qué, um, ya que, dado que, and slightly less commonly, but it still works, puesto que. Vale? So I'm going to use some more of these to add a reason, to add a why to these sentences. So we've done the first one. Give it a little tick and pink. Next one, me encanta el helado. Why? Let's hit, add here, ya que. Because, and then I'm going to say, tiene um, un sabor, a taste. A sabor dulce, because it has a sweet taste. So I like ice cream because... It has a sweet taste, or um, that's yeah, exactly a sweet taste, dulce, sabor dulce is how I would translate that. Next one, no me gusta nada, mi profesor de español. Um, can I have, have I got space here? Yes, I have. Dado que, let's use this time. Another way of saying because nos da, so da is he, she gives, he, she gives us a lot of homework. Muchos deberes. So I don't like at all my um, Spanish teacher because he gives us a lot of homework and um, es muy estricto. So you probably know most of these words, but putting it together is the hard part, forming these longer sentences with connectives. So here I'm using and, and then I've said, um, yeah, I've said, for example, yeah, no me gusta, and then a noun plus the because, and then two reasons I've given here. Okay, last one, me preocupa la contaminación. Um, what can we do with this one? We can say, uh, ¿Por qué? It causes, causa, um, I'm going to say, el calentamiento global. Calentamiento, do we know what this means? Calentamiento global is global warming. So like, pollution worries me. Why? Because it causes global warming. That's the final way. Why can I not take? There we go. And that's, there's four examples made longer in pink here with four different ways of just basically saying because and giving a reason. That's how you spice up these sentences. And now the very last thing in this box about me gusta and me encanta es nearly full. The very last thing I'm going to talk about is different tenses. So we've said in the present tense talking about myself in the present tense talking about other people. Lastly, let's mix both of those together and let's talk about different tenses now. Vale? Um, there's three main tenses you would use in sort of GCSE level and just like in, in most common speaking and writing. Um, but I'm going to talk about four of them. So firstly, there's two past tenses, isn't there? Um, so we have me gusto. Let's do this in blue, actually. So me gusto. I liked me gusto. If it's plural, um, I liked something plural, me gustaron. Vale? This is the preterite tense. I'm going to write P-R-E-T, the preterite tense. Um, 
now let's go into the imperfect tense, me gustaba, which hopefully you would have seen somewhere or even heard of, me gustaba. If it's plural, we need me gustaban. Me gustaban. And this is the IMP, the imperfect tense, just short for imperfect, IMP. Next, the conditional tense. Me gustaría or me gustarían. Especially at GCSE, you would have seen these before, I'm sure. So, me gustarían, gustarían. And this is the C-O-N-D dot, the conditional tense. Lastly, the future tense. This is less common, but I'll write it here anyway. Me gustara. So, in the future tense, we have we keep the infinitive and we add the ending, a. Or if it's plural, let's do that nicer. Me gustaran. Gustaran, N, N at the end. And this is the future tense, F, U, T, full stop. Okay? Um, just so you know what I mean, let me give you an example. So, I can say, as a sentence, um, mi amigo, let's say a mi amigo, le gustaría, what does it mean, le gustaría? So we've seen le means like sort of he or him, and this gustaría is the conditional tense. So he would like, my friend, or like, yeah, for my friend, he would like to be ser futbolista. Vale, so my friend would like to be a footballer. And that's one example of using these different tenses and other people. So moving away from just I like, let's say he liked, he would like, they will like, they used to like. Really mixing up and using other people, other tenses. So the petro tense, the imperfect tense, the conditional and the future. If you're narrating a day out with a family or something, you can use the petro it. I liked the weather. We liked the food. We liked the cinema. We liked the movie. That sort of thing. Um, using these other tenses. Okay, so that's all for this. Me gusta and me encanta box is now complete. Um, let's move on to conjugated verbs. So in the last video, we saw these, um, how many are Six sentences, six quite short sentences. So, juego al fútbol, ella habla con sus amigos, ellos tienen un perro, mis amigos viven en una casa, Pablo comió un bocadillo, and lastly, mi familia y yo usamos WhatsApp. So, many different tenses here. So, not tenses, different persons, isn't it? different people. So, I, um, she, they, they, he, and then we. That's what I meant. Okay. How can we make these sentences better? So firstly, adjectives, right? Obviously, using adjectives is just a nice way to add, to describe nouns, right? That's what adjectives do even in English. So adjectives, let's go through a list of some adjectives, shall we? So firstly, um, I'm going to, these are relatively simple ones. These are only a few, these aren't all of them, obviously. Um, they're just really common adjectives. So bonito is the first one I'm going to go through. I'm going to write it in black. So bonito means like pretty or beautiful. Um, feo is the opposite. Feo means ugly. Um, alto, oops, I cannot spell today. Alto is tall. Bajo is short. Grande is big. And the opposite, pequeño. Pequeño is small. Nuevo is new. And the opposite is like antiguo, we can say. Um, oops. Antiguo. O viejo. Viejo is more for people. Antiguo is the things. So old things versus old people. Um, caro is expensive. Barato is the opposite. Barato is cheap. Yeah, fácil. Is easy. Difícil. Um, is hard. Útil is useful, etc. Okay, so just some adjectives here I've listed here. Let's move this more towards the right side. Okay, so now let's add these to this um, sentences to these sentences here. Um, before we do that, something else we can do. So to add more information, let's do another heading in black. Adding more information. So if you have any sort of conjugated verb, um, this would also the one I'm going to show you here, these four ways of adding more information. We'll also pass into these other boxes as well. So there is some overlap for sure. But if you have any sort of sentence where you're narrating something's happening or with some sort of conjugated verb, which obviously this is also a conjugated verb, but this I'm defining as the me gusta, me encanta, where you don't have anything me gusta, me encanta, here are some things you can do. You can use adjectives. And what do adjectives do? They describe the noun, right? So to 
describe nouns. Other things you can do, you can use para. This word para means in order to. And we can use it to show purpose or your intention, basically. Right? And it means in order to is how we will translate this. You can use because. And we saw four ways of saying because earlier. So we can add a justification here. So because obviously you're giving a reason for something, you're giving the because, the why. We can add a time frame as well. How often do you do something? Well, yeah, and we saw these in part one. So time phrase. To answer the question of how often do you talk to your friends? How often do you play football? How often? So using these four sorts of little tricks, adjectives, para, because, and time phrases, we can make our sentences longer. So let's have a go at that now. So I'm going to use pink again just to show you the little spiced up version. So juego al fútbol. Let's answer. Let's use. Um, let's use the last one. Time phrase. How often do we play football? Cada. So each. I'm going to do this in slightly thicker here. So juego al fútbol cada. I'm going to say cada día. So we've used the time phrase here. Good. Um, let's add something else. Let's add a reason. A because. So por qué. And we can just say, porque es divertido. Divertido is one of the simplest adjectives, just means fun. Even though I would say, don't always use divertido, there are better adjectives, like we saw entretenido um, in the previous box somewhere up here, didn't we? Anyway, um, in this sentence, you can use divertido. It's still a really good, high quality sentence, even though you've used a simple word like divertido. Vale? Next, ella habla con sus amigos. Um, let's use another time phrase. Let's use de vez en cuando. De vez en cuando. So this is like every now and again. Or from time to time. So yeah, sometimes. Um, and there, we've made the sentence start much longer. Ellos tienen un perro. We can describe the perro. Perro pequeño. A small dog. Perro, sorry, um, perro grande. A big dog. Mis amigos viven en una casa. Again, we can describe this house. We can say con. Con una piscina. So, for example, yeah, a house with a swimming, swimming pool. Or if we think strictly to these four, we can add an adjective. Again, a grande house. Bonita. Or bon yeah, bonita because feminine here. So with these adjectives, you have to be able to change the last letter. If, for example, it's una casa, is feminine. So it's going to be bonita, not bonito. Um, Pablo comió un bocadillo. We can say why. So ya que, because, ya que. How do we say because he was hungry? We're going to say, ya que tenía hambre. Vale, hambre is the word for hunger, so because he had hunger, he was hungry. Last one, mi familia y yo usamos WhatsApp. So from this list of, oops, from this list, we haven't, um, let's put that full stop back. From this list, we haven't used para, so let's use para here. I'll show you how to use para. I think para is one of the, um, the better ways. Let's highlight this. Para is a really nice way of adding extra information. So, para mantenernos, mantener, and then nos en contacto. So, me and my family, we use WhatsApp to keep ourselves, to maintain ourselves in contact, to keep in contact. Vale? So, four ways of adding more information to really simple sentences. Um, if you're not going to use sort of a me gusta phrase or even an opinion phrase, you're going to say something like usamos WhatsApp or uso las redes sociales, I use social media. That's an example we're going to talk about in this box down here. Um, this is how you add more information. The last thing before we finish conjugated verbs is going to be double verbs, verbs back to back, verbs together. So that's right here, double verbs, and I'll show you what I mean. So some words, I'm going to write a list of them. So we have, um, these are all going to be in the I form. So puedo, quiero, espero, necesito, necesito, spot that incorrectly, necesito, suelo, any more I can think of? Nah, okay. Um, all of these can be followed by an infinitive. So all of these are a verb. They can all be followed by another infinitive to have two verbs back to back. So if you want to say, for example, um, I 
can swim. You don't need to know how to conjugate um, the verb nadar. You can leave nadar exactly how it is and just say puedo nadar. This makes it slightly easier, I think. You can leave nada, just know puedo as I can, and you can put anything else off to it, any infinitive. Puedo hablar, puedo comer, puedo, um, like, jugar, I can play some sort of game. Or puedo nadar, for example, I can swim. You can say, quiero nadar, I want to swim. Again, without knowing how to conjugate nadar, you can just say quiero. This works in other tenses as well. We can say, pude is I could in the preterite. Vale? So we can say pude nadar without knowing how to conjugate nadar in a whole different tense, in the preterite tense. We can say pude, I could swim. It works the same with all of these. So puedo, I can, quiero, I want, espero, I hope, necesito, I need, and suelo. I usually there are way more examples than just these. But oftentimes, to vary up your work, try and use some of these nice words that help you, lead you on to adding another infinitive after this word um, and having just a different sentence, right? Just to point out, let's do in orange, espero is slightly different in the way. You can have three verbs together. You can say espero. Actually, um, it would work with, for example, quiero as well, but let's use espero. Espero poder. And after poder, it has to be some sort of infinitive. So I, I hope to be able to swim. There are three verbs back to back. Two of them are in the infinitives in the infinitive state, so they're completely untouched, left in their normal state, and espero is conjugated to say, I, I hope to be able to swim. And this could lead on to a whole big sentence about swimming and why swimming is good for you, etc., um, with three verbs back to back, okay? And now to go on to our final box as we slowly wrap this video up, um, opinion phrases and fact. So last video, we talked about loads of opinion phrases to say, I think, in my opinion, we talked about opinion phrase plus a noun, s and son, and then some sort of adjective. Or you can say structure using I, which means there is. So no I, for example, there is not. We saw these two examples in the last video as well. How can we make these sentences even longer? As you'd expect, adding a because. And this is what teachers call justified opinions. So you have an opinion and you give a reason. You give a because is a justified opinion. We saw earlier, I think which twice we saw in both boxes above, the ways of saying because, so porque, um, dado que, ya que, and puesto que. So after an opinion, and a fact of some sort, you can add a reason using because this key word because why do you like this why do you think this because vale okay let's practice using pink again i like using this color so diría que mi profesor de arte es simpa simpático porque oops the nice shapes porque um what reason can i give here we can say something like, no, es estricto, he's not strict, but you've already said he's nice, so you want to give like a whole different level of reason, an actual true reason. If we say he's not strict, then you can give another reason to say why you don't think he's strict. That's an opinion, right? He's strict, he's nice is an opinion. It's just an adjective, but it's your opinion from your point of view. I'm going to say a slightly different reason. I'm going to say, porque explica todo con paciencia. Paciencia. Now, theoretically, you can get in a loop of keep saying because, because, because. So because he does this, because he does this. But I think this is a good reason. It's not an adjective. It's more than an adjective. It's saying um, because he explains everything with patience. It's an actual reason of something's happening. So I think that or I would say that my art teacher is nice because he explains everything with patience. And there we go. A nice long sentence from opinion phrase. In this case, I've used a noun, I've said es simpatico, and then given a justified a reason, given a because for that. Okay? Um, and that's all I'm going to say on justified opinions. Obviously, you can do this with all different sentences that give you more examples. But hopefully, the ones above, sort of, you get the gist by what I mean by just giving an opinion, giving a reason after an opinion. Lastly, we're going to go through in this box down here, um, just another framework. 
So I think what I've already explained to you is enough for you to go and start answering questions, writing paragraphs of text and stuff, especially for exams like GCSE and A-level. I think what I've explained to you already is enough. But just another framework, if you have a basic sentence, so for example, uso las redes sociales. So you have a really basic sentence here, right? Four words, and this is a conjugated verb sentence. If you think about, if you were to classify this structure, you're using um, a subject verb object. The subject is your verb is uso, and the object is social media, right? That is the what. Now the where. The where. Where do you use social media? We can say uso las redes sociales en casa, at home. You don't have to say en mi casa, you can just say en casa, which directly translates to at home. Vale? Um, now we can say with who. So again, uso las redes sociales en casa. We're going to say, um, we can say con for with, con mi familia. Even though the sentence may not make perfect sense in the fact that you're using social media at home with your family, um, the framework is what's most important. Going from a what, adding a where, adding a with who, now let's add a how often. So let's rewrite the entire sentence. Uso las redes sociales. Handwriting is getting bad here. En casa. Um, con mi familia. And where would it make sense to add uh, how often? I'm going to do it at the start here. A menudo, which is like sometimes. Uso las redes sociales en casa con mi familia. Um, and last but not least, a why. Adding some sort of reason. I'm going to use para for this. So we can obviously use por qué o dado que or something. I'm going to use a para. So a menudo. Uso las redes sociales. What came next? En casa, yes. En casa. Con, what I say, mi familia. Now I'm going to use para to give a purpose or attention, which is basically like a why. So to or in order to compartir is share photos. So in order to have a spot that quickly compartir is to share yes photos. So often I use social media at home with my family to share photos. So maybe the sentence does not make perfect sense. I mean, it grammatically it does, but it's sort of in English, maybe now you wouldn't probably say these words together. But look, we've gone from a, a sentence with four words to like over 10 words. Yeah. So that is the final thing I want to show you in this video is this what, where, with who, when and a why structure. If you've given a short sentence, add more information, ask yourself questions to give yourself more things to mention in your in your um, sentence to make a sentence even longer. And then obviously, these connectives and conjunctions and time phrases, you can add, pepper them in throughout your work, especially sentence starters, stuff like sobre todo works really nicely as a sentence starter. Um, and that is all for this video. So I really hope these structures now make sense. I've made loads of exam focused videos in the past, but I've not sat down to actually teach these basics before. For GCSE or A-level Spanish tutoring, head to astarspanish.com slash tutoring. Adios.